Today, we'll use Pulumi, an open source, modern infrastructure as code tool to provision cloud infrastructure. Pulumi supports lots of clouds and different cloud architectures, but today we'll be using GCP to host a public website. We'll assume we already have the Pulumi CLI downloaded and we'll create a new Pulumi project. We can name the project, give it a short description, and we'll also tell it uh, some things like our stack name and the name of the uh, project we're going to deploy into. So once we've done that, we have a small Pulumi program template. Let's take a look at what's in here. So you can see we import a couple of packages and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and change the first line here to actually indicate the name that we wanna use for our bucket. This is because we're going to create a website bucket and we'd like to actually have a website name that matches uh, the corresponding bucket name. So we'll just call this uh, a DNS name that we've already pre-created that actually points at Google storage. So here we have a name gcsexample.pulumi.tv. So we can easily run Pulumi up. What this does is it, it actually generates a preview of the things that we'll deploy. We take a look, it looks fine, so we say yes. And this will actually start to call the APIs against GCS, uh, GCP. And you can see we create our bucket. We can actually open this in our Pulumi console and see that we have our preview that we had there, and then we also see the resources that were created. So we come back to our terminal and we can use gsutil to take a look at the bucket. And uh, we can actually use the output that we've generated from our program. So as expected, this will turn an empty result since we have nothing there yet. So let's put something in our bucket. Let's create a folder, dub, 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 and we'll create uh, index.html. And we'll create a very simple uh, website. Just throw in some stuff here. And now we have to read this file into our program. So how can we do that? We can just use the native uh, primitives in any uh, programming language. In our case in Go, we can use IOUtil and read that directory in to find those files. So once we have that set of files, we can iterate through those files. Again, using the standard way you would do so in Go. And for each file, we'll create a new bucket object. You can see that we actually have auto-completion uh, in our IDE. So we name the resource the name of the file, and we pass in some uh, arguments uh, to create this object. So in particular, we want to tell it what bucket to place this file into, uh, the name that we want to have this file be on the on the in the within the bucket, um, and then finally, uh, we have to actually tell it where to get the the file. And so we I can actually uh, create a a file asset. Uh, this is a built-in uh, object in Pulumi as well. So we pass it that www uh, file uh, path. So this will actually create a file uh, in that bucket uh, using the contents of the files we have on disk. So if we run Pulumi up, we can see from the preview that we'll end up creating a new uh, bucket object, but you'll also notice that nothing else has changed, just this new bucket object is being created. So when we call the, uh, when we say yes, and actually perform the update, you can see one uh, resource is created. And when we use gsutil, we can see that that file is now in our bucket. If we try to curl this particular URL, uh, you'll see that this doesn't work. So we uh, get this access denied exception. And the reason for that is we haven't configured the bucket to be a website yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can go and add this additional argument to the bucket itself. So we modify the bucket. And now we're going to pass in a uh, parameter to give it uh, to, to tell uh, the bucket what we actually want uh, as far as the website goes. Uh, there's a Bain page suffix, so we'll actually uh, go ahead and say we want to use the index.html file as our main uh, page. And then, of course, we need to make that file readable uh, by the public. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add an ACL to that object. So first we need to actually have a reference to the object. And then of course, uh, now we can go ahead and add the add the ACL to the object. So that's as simple as uh, adding another object uh, in our programming uh, code. And here we just create a new resource. You'll notice we can actually name the resource the same thing. We call it file.name again. 
uh, just like we did before. So as long as uh, the names are unique across types, uh, within the same type rather, uh, it's going to be it's going to be fine. So here we create this new ACL. We give it the bucket uh, again, the same bucket from before, and we actually use the output name of the of the object um, in case it's pre-computed uh, or it's computed rather, and then we give it a predefined ACL of public read. And you'll notice we actually wrap this in a pulumi.string. This is so that it's typed uh, to be an input. And now if we run pulumi up, we'll see that we're going to have a one one diff and one create. So the diff is the diff to the update is the, the update to the bucket, uh, which you see got updated. And then the create is the create of the object ACL. And now if we curl the website, it comes back as we expect. So in a few easy steps, we've actually created a public website, uh, which is a few lines of code. We can now destroy uh, this stack. So we can call Pulumi destroy, which will remove all the resources that we have created. And if we want to leave no trace behind of what we've done, we can uh, go ahead and call Pulumi stack RM. So you can see earlier, I just curled to show that that is actually gone. And then now finally, uh, we've removed uh, the stack as well. While this example used Go, GCP, and manually deployed from the command line, Pulumi supports many different languages, cloud environments, and CI CD environments to make automated delivery easier. Pulumi is open source and free to use. Give it a try today.